Hello and welcome to my talk on the weighted LP Sobolev regularity for stochastic partial differential equations on non-smooth domains with corner singularities. For the ones of you who don't know me yet, my name is Petru Czajka Licht and I just moved from the University of Duisburg-Essen to the University of Kassel. Large parts of the results I will present today are the outcome of a collaboration with Kyung Hun Kim, Ki Jung Lee, and Felix Lindner. Before I start, I would like to thank the organizers for putting up this online version of the GPSD 2020 and for giving us the opportunity to present our results and share new ideas despite this ongoing pandemic. This is supposed to be a very short talk, so I'm going to choose a, a very simple and basic setting. I'm only going to talk about the stochastic heat equation in this form, as you see it here. Uh, it's a stochastic heat equation on a domain which I denote by O and which I will specify in a moment how it will look like. We let this diffusion, which is disturbed by a forcing term in this deterministic part and an additive noise, run over a finite time interval, zero to capital T. The noise is driven by a sequence of IID, R-valued standard Brownian motions. Throughout, I impose zero Dirichlet boundary conditions and for simplicity, I even assume that I have vanishing initial value. So I have these uh, forcing terms in the deterministic and in the stochastic part. These are real valued functions that depend on three variables, the randomness out of omega, a time variable out of this finite time interval, zero to capital T, and the space variable out of this domain O. And I'm mainly interested in the influence of the behavior of these forcing terms on the behavior of the solution of the equation. Now, of course, the stochastic heat equation has been analyzed for a long time. Many aspects are known and uh, many details are clarified. However, what is not clarified yet is how such an equation behaves on non-smooth domains. So far, most results on the stochastic heat equation and also on other more general second order stochastic parabolic equations are only for domains that are at least C1. So their boundary has to be continuously differentiable. And this is not the case for many domains that appear in applications like polygons, polyedra, cones. They are all, they are all domains with a rather simple geometry, but they are not C1. They are all, almost everywhere they are, um, they are smooth, but in a finite set of points, they have these singularities, which I call corners or conical singularities. So the goal is to establish a theory for these uh, equations. And I'm in particular interested in establishing a so-called LP theory. And to start with, what I would like to have is a theorem of this type here. Sorry for that. A theorem of this type here. So I'm searching for suitable function spaces on the domain O, which I can use to formulate a statement like this that says that if the forcing terms in the deterministic part of the equation and in the stochastic part of the equation are p-integrable stochastic processes with a certain regularity in space, which is formulated by the function spaces we have identified, then there exists a unique solution U, which is again a p-integrable stochastic process with a certain um, regularity with respect to the space variable. And I also want to have an estimate of this type where I can estimate the corresponding norm of the solution by a constant times the sum of the norms of the individual forcing terms in the deterministic and in the stochastic part. 
Okay, before I present such a result, which we have obtained so far, I would like to show you the state of the art at the time when we started working on these topics. This was around 2016, 2017. I will distinguish between deterministic partial differential equations on, and, and stochastic partial differential equations on the one hand, and between equations on smooth versus non-smooth domains on the other. Now to start with, if you look at PDEs on smooth domains, let's say parabolic or elliptic PDEs on smooth domains, then we know you can build a beautiful LP theory by using classical LP sub OLF spaces for a large class of second order or even higher order partial differential equations on smooth domains. However, if you move to stochastic PDEs, like the stochastic heat equation I've shown before, then you will encounter an additional difficulty, which comes from a certain incompatibility of the noise with the boundary conditions, which results in blow-ups of the derivatives, especially of the higher order derivatives of the solution at the boundary. What happens is that you have a very rough noise. At the same time, you impose, for example, zero Dirichlet boundary condition. And this leads to the fact that at the boundary, your solution is very steep so that the higher order derivatives will have blow ups at the boundary. And these blow ups, because of these blow ups, the derivatives won't be integrable anymore. So, in general, you can't obtain higher order LP sub OLF regularity, not even second order. And what you can do uh, here, and what is done in the literature, is on the one hand, you can impose compatibility conditions. You can say, okay, for example, for the stochastic heat equation I've just presented, where we have zero Dirichlet boundary conditions, if I require that the noise disappears at the boundary, then I'm in business again and I get LP sub OLF regularity of order two on the reasonable assumption. However, if I don't want to kill my noise at the boundary and I really want to describe what happens if I have noise at the boundary, then I will have to quantify these blowups. And one way to do this is to use weighted sub OLF spaces based on the distance to the boundary of the domain, which I denote by rho here. And such spaces have been introduced by Nikolai Krilov and collaborators. And the beautiful theory has been developed where you can obtain very nice descriptions, uh, very nice theorems of the type I've, I've just shown before. Um, and this works very well for smooth domains down to C1 domains, but beyond C1 domains, the, result are not, the results are not sharp anymore. And this is most likely because of an effect which is already known from the theory of deterministic partial differential equations on non-smooth domains, namely that singularity of, of the boundaries, like corners, edges, or cusps, um, also lead to blow-ups of the derivatives at the boundary. But not at the full boundary, but at the boundary singularities. This may even happen if your forcing terms don't even have a support at the singularities of the boundary. There is a huge amount of literature on this topic. And to summarize it, one would say that one can say that you can quantify these blow ups by using suitable weighted sub OLF spaces, which are not based on the full distance to the boundary, but the distance to the set of boundary singularities. Now, if you look at the situation, you see that. If you want to do a theory for SPDEs on non-smooth domains, you need to capture both these effects. On the one hand, you have to describe the, what happens because of this incompatibility between noise and boundary conditions. At the same time, you have to describe what happens because of the boundary singularities. And you have to describe the interaction of these two effects. And when we started, there wasn't much known. Um, only a few papers were, were available and the results were not sharp. And the idea was to make them sharp by introducing weighted sub OLF spaces that are uh, that, with mixed weights. So we, where we use both 
weights based on the distance to the boundary and on the distance to the singularities of the boundary. And to find a way to define the weights in such a way that we capture exactly what happens with the stochastic heat equation there. And what we came up with are weighted LP Sobolev spaces with mixed weights based, as I said, on rho, which is the distance to the boundary, and rho naught, which is the distance to the set of singularities. We'll see a few examples here of the different distances. And our spaces are defined the following way. For non-negative integers gamma, the weighted LP Sobolev space of order gamma H gamma P theta theta is defined as the collection of all locally integrable functions on O such that this quantity here stays finite. And if you look at it and first erase all everything that's colored, then you see this is the class, these are the classical, this would be the classical Sobolev spaces. And by introducing these weights, you have more control on the description of the, of the behavior of the functions you describe and their derivatives at the boundary, and even more control at the singularities of the boundary. Note that the spaces, the, 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 the weights in the spaces depend on the order of the, of the derivatives. And this way you can describe functions which, for example, vanish at the boundary, but their higher order derivatives are allowed to blow up, up to a certain amount at the boundary. Now using these spaces, we can indeed establish such a result as formulated on the first slide as our goal. If we look at this domain, so on polygonal domains or domains with corners in R2, then we can say that if the forcing in the deterministic part has weighted LP Sobolev regularity of order gamma in these spaces with suitable weight parameters, and in the stochastic part, gamma plus one, then there is a unique solution with regularity gamma plus two um, in the sense given by this weighted Sobolev spaces above. And we also have a suitable estimate. Note that the different parts of the equation have different, um, uh, different weights. Now this result holds for all capital theta in this range and all little theta in this range, where this kappa naught here is the in the, the maximal interior angle of your polygon, or in the case of of this dihedral angle or, or this angular domain, it is simply this angle here. And the nice thing is that these domains, these ranges are sharp. So this is the sharp range if you would look at the equation on smooth domains. And this is the sharp range if you wouldn't have any noise. So in total, we have a sharp result and a very detailed description of the behavior of the solution at the boundary singularities, away from the boundary singularities, and how this, the two influences and influences I mentioned above uh, interact. If you want to read more about this, uh, we have proven these results in these three papers. And if you want to see also generalizations, then there is a recent preprint by Kyung-hoon Kim ki jung Lee and Jin Sol Seo, where they also consider more general equations. They go to higher dimensions. They prove Holder estimates and allow for non-zero initial conditions. Um, so the generalizations that one would want to have However, there are lots of open topics which are known how to be treated on smooth domains, but not much is known on non-smooth domains. 
Among others, we would like to have, for example, an LQLP theory, meaning that we would like, so far, the integrability parameters with respect to randomness, time, and space uh, have to be the same. And the, the techniques we use so far are not that easy to change so that we can choose different integrability parameters. But it is highly desirable to have this and natural. Another generalization would be that we would like to have more general second order SPDs also to allow for more general boundary conditions like Neumann boundary conditions or Popham boundary conditions. And of course, it would be desirable also to have a theory on domain with cusps or with or, or, or on polyhedra and step by step to get a refined LP theory for SPDs on non-smooth domains, which makes this theory applicable to problems in physics and engineering where such domains appear. Okay, that's it for the moment. Thank you very much for watching. Uh, I'm very much looking forward to the discussion session during the conference. Until then, stay healthy and bye-bye.